For those that don't follow me on Twitter and haven't actually seen me whining like a little bitch, there hasn't really been a video this week because since the start of the week I've actually had a gastric virus. So since the start of the week I have been getting no sleep, puking everywhere and literally peeing out of my fucking arse. So I haven't really had it in me to make a proper video, so instead I'm just going to do a recap of a few things that have happened over the last little while that I probably should talk about, but I'm probably going to be doing it in a sort of a half-arsed manner. And half-arsed is fitting because after this week, I've only got half an arse left. <laughs> Roseanne Barr said that Valerie Janet looked like the Muslim Brotherhood and Planet of the Apes had a baby, and then she tried to blame it on Ambien. Oofed. Pretty edgy, but Roseanne has kind of been known in the past for bringing the edge. Roseanne tried to apologise for this and blamed the tweet on her being on Ambien and also the fact that she thought that Valerie was Jewish. Because, uh, par partly that makes it better. <laughs> in regards to the tweet, yeah, but... It wasn't very funny, was it? It was actually a, it was actually a pretty shit joke, but the fallout that came after it was our shows get pulled and cancelled from all the networks, meaning that loads and loads of people that actually work on the show have now lost their jobs, and I don't find that very fair that a bunch of random people who had nothing to do with the tweet uh, have now been thrown into financial difficulty, all because one person wanted to be an edgy boy. I just, I just find that extremely fucking unfair. But like I've said many times before in the past, if people get butt mad over an edgy joke that you made, never, ever apologise. All that does is put you exactly where they want you and they will milk that for everything that it's fucking worth. Never apologise. Tommy Robinson. Something that I haven't spoke about, mainly because there was that whole media ban on actually talking about what happened and then also... I became really sick, but there are a few key things that I do actually want to discuss about what happened. Yes, he did break the law. Yes, he did violate the terms of his licence. But while he was streaming outside the court, he did say to the police officers several times if it was okay what he was doing, and they several times told him yes, and there is footage of that on the stream. Now, the information that I'm about to give you has been given to me from sources that I do actually trust, but I haven't been able to verify it, so... Take this information in any way that you will. When Tommy was arrested, his lawyer got in contact with the police to ask for details on where it is his lawyer would need to travel to. The police told the lawyer that that wasn't necessary because Tommy was going to be released, so Tommy's lawyer didn't bother travelling down because his client was going to be released anyway. As we know, that isn't what happened. Tommy was not released. He was taken into the court building and he was given a court-appointed public defender. The public defender told Tommy over and over again to just plead guilty, which is something that Tommy's lawyer would never have actually told him to do. So this was obviously extremely bad legal advice, but Tommy, being in the situation that he was in, decided to trust in this random guy and go along with the information he was given. And when in the courtroom, when the judge was reviewing the evidence that he was about to convict Tommy over, which in this case was the stream, the judge apparently only watched five minutes of the stream and then said that he wasn't interested in watching the rest of it. The judge apparently wasn't interested in the evidence that he was about to convict a man over and instead decided to ignore the rest of it and jail him anyway. Now, can you imagine if any other judge in any other trial tried to fucking do that? Evidence? Pfft, nah, never mind that, man. Guilty. And so in the space of a few hours, Tommy Robinson was streamlined from standing on the street doing his job straight into a 13-month prison sentence. In the space of a few hours. Yes, he did break the law, but 30, 13 fucking months for what he did, man, and for it to have it slammed on him in that short period of time... <laughs> you can't you can't help but ra raise a little bit of an eyebrow at that, can you? Yeah, Tommy going to jail is a bit of a huge blow for us, but that doesn't mean that everything that we're doing suddenly stops, right? Yeah, it fucking sucks, and I'm absolutely gutted that he get handed a 13 month sentence over the quite minor thing that he did in my eyes. But again, that doesn't mean that everything that we're doing stops. We carry on regardless. We keep fighting for free speech, and we. Just, just keep this, keep the seat nice and warm for Tommy for when he gets out, right? Everyone, keep doing what you're doing. This isn't over. 
Elon Musk has actively came out against the press. He's even went as far as to say that he wants to establish a platform where people will be able to confirm the validity of the facts that the press present. I actually completely support this, but you're getting some idiots that are trying to say that this goes directly against the concept of a free press. It actually doesn't in any way. Let me explain why. The press can still pretty much print anything that they want, and the public can critique the press in any way that they want to. That's free speech. That remains untouched. So the press can still say whatever they want, and people can still say whatever they want about what the press puts out. Free speech is still intact. The only thing that's been added to the situation is a resource that contains facts and statistics so that people can actually verify who is telling the truth, be it the press themselves or the people also critiquing the press because it works both ways. And it's also a case of no individual or press agency is the arbiter of what is true and what is false. Facts and reality are. And I see absolutely nothing wrong with that. But keep a close eye on the people who do actually have a problem with this because you do have to raise a bit of an eyebrow at people who have a problem with the press and certain individuals getting fact-checked. I think Elon actually spoke about it in a tweet. Who do you think owns the press? <laughs> oh. oh, Lord Elon, baby, what is you doing? Except he wasn't talking about Jews. He was talking about the elite who do have a lot of clout when it comes to the media. That whole anti-Semitism bullshit is just something that the elite use to pull out whenever their power gets called into question. Who said anything about Jews? Nobody mentioned anything about Jews. The media's head immediately fucking jumped to that conclusion themselves. So who's the real bigot here? But we can move on to that old free speech expression. You can't yell fire in a crowded movie theatre. Except in this case it's, you can't text to speech a bomb threat in a crowded college campus. C4 has been successfully activated. Bomb detonation countdown successfully started. Wait, what's going on? On the ground, don't make any sudden movement. Okay, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm recording, bro, if you're gonna shoot me. That's fine. What are you doing, bro? Put, Put the gun, gun down. down. Put the gun down. Put your backpack on. What are you doing, bro? Hey, just listen to the officer. Put your hand behind your back, okay? I didn't do anything wrong, bro. One thing that I did consider doing at one point maybe was IRL live streams, but one thing that I absolutely would not do is activate text to fucking speech during these live streams because when you do that, all you are doing is giving the worst people on the internet the ability to say the worst things imaginable through a, essentially a fucking megaphone on your person and blast this shit to everyone around you and have everyone around you think it's you. The whole thing with not being able to yell fire in a crowded movie theatre is because it can cause people to panic, which can then make them stampede, people can get trampled, get seriously hurt or even killed. That's why that is a thing that you can't do under free speech, because it can place people in danger. Now, I know that Arabandi, this wasn't his intent, he wasn't actively trying to get people hurt, but unfortunately most speech laws come with a reckless clause so, and that was the exact same case in my trial as well, the law I was charged under also had a reckless clause where you didn't actively try and get the outcome, your intent wasn't to achieve this specific outcome, but this outcome happened anyway because of your own recklessness, so that might be what the cops actually get to nail him on. I do personally seriously hope that he does not go to prison over this, like, yeah, he did fuck up, but it wasn't 100% his fault, he was just extremely stupid and careless, and there wasn't really any intent or malice on his end, so I, I think I think it was just a stupid mistake, and I, I really do hope that he doesn't actually go to prison over this. Feminist Frequency did a fundraiser with a target of 35 grand. They must have something massive planned. I mean, they must have some big, huge plans, some big, huge upcoming project. Because what, what kind of thing would require stacks so fat 
I mean, they, they must have something huge coming up. So what is it that they could be doing with all of that money? Well, if they hit their target of 25 grand, they're going to open a Discord server. A free Discord server that costs nothing to open and costs nothing to manage and costs nothing to run. But apparently if you're a woman, it costs 25 fucking grand. Then if they get another 10k and actually hit their 35k target, they are going to virtually visit a high school and talk to the students about feminism and pop culture. That's a, that's a fucking expensive Skype call, man. So 10 grand to make a Skype call and 25 grand to open up a Discord server. All of which involve no cost whatsoever. I've got a Discord server with about 5,000 members and it doesn't cost me a penny. Just, just a little bit of my sanity. In fact, I could probably make money from my Discord because I'm fairly certain that Discord at this point would pay me to delete my Discord server because we all, we operate within the rules. Just, we, we operate just within the rules. Praise the Magna Scatter. But I'm fairly certain that Discord would actually pay me to delete my Discord because I'm fairly certain at this point that they are absolutely sick and tired of their servers getting packed with terabytes upon terabytes of scat porn. But do you want to know the worst thing about Feminist Frequencies fucking fundraiser? They hit their fucking target. The Feminist Frequency channel is dead in the fucking water. It is a dead channel and this is just a last ditch effort for Anita to con a bit more money before full irrelevancy fucking kicks in. Gamergate happened. You lost. Fucking deal with it. The final thing that I want to talk about. A dear, dear friend of mine. Good buddy old pal. Has turned terrorist. We now live in a day and age where edgy jokes can get you into trouble and in some cases land you in prison. In some cases they can actually get you banned from Israel. Until you get visited by some very interesting people who decide to cancel your ban. Thanks boys. Context is obviously very important when it comes to making any kind of joke, especially nowadays. And fortunately the authorities recognise that the joke that my friend made is a very well known internet meme and so based on that no further action is going to get taken against them so <laughs> that was fortunate so my friend the terrorist scrump you may you may have heard of him uh, what what exactly did he do well he posted a tweet that said some of you guys are all right don't go down to Carl Arts tomorrow and the whole Carl Arts building got fucking evacuated due to a perceived threat from an active shooter. Scrump, you, you fucking mad lad. Cause there's a star man shit posting online. It's just a fucking joke, boys. He's not gonna blow your mind. <laughs> it's okay. Count Dankula on YouTube. Everybody should subscribe.